My name is Nick Markham and I'm the lead engineer at AT Controls. Before we show you how to modify our 3R actuators for reverse acting, I'd like to first go over a few coating options that we now have available. First, our standard option is a hard anodized coated body. This is coated inside and out with epoxy coated end caps. The carbon steel pinions are zinc plated and all the fasteners are stainless steel. This standard setup is good for most general and industrial use applications. We have two additional coating options. Both options have an upgraded 316 stainless steel pinion and also have stainless steel fasteners. First, this electroless nickel plated actuator. This coating is done not only externally, but also internally. This coating provides great corrosion resistance for use in acid mines or caustic washdowns with sodium or potassium hydroxide. Second, the PTFE infused coating, which is also coated internally and is coated on top with the standard hard anodized body. This coating holds up great in seawater applications as it can withstand an ASTM B117 salt fog spray test. This coating is also excellent for caustic washdowns with sodium or potassium hydroxide. Ray will now show you how to modify these actuators for reverse acting, which is commonly used in fail open applications. Hi, I'm Ray McNown. I'm here with uh, the new series 3R series actuator and we'll show you how to make this thing fail open. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put air on it. And we're going to take a 13 and 14 millimeter. And loosen the stop. You want to take back your stops off so you're off the cam so it releases the pressure on your springs. And we'll start by removing the end cap. When we get down these two, you want to Go side to side so you're not putting all the pressure on one side. And do the same the other side. Once you get them end caps off and the springs out, you want to take your dust bowl, pop the pistons out. Usually after you do two turns, you can feel it come off the rack. And at this point, just pull the pistons out. For a fail close, your rack will be on the left-hand side. Fail open, your rack will be on the right. Then on these, once you take it apart, if you happen to turn it too many times, on the inside here, up on your ears, you should see two spots where your stops have hidden. If you don't, then you have to rotate it again so you're in the right position. So you can kind of put it together and rotate it to visually see where you're at. Once you're in the right position, put your piston back in with your rack on the right.
You can see how the pinion's off, so I'm a tooth off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back it back out until I can feel it come off the rack. Bring it back in, and that's where you should be at. Now to double check that you're equal on each side, you wanna run the pistons out until you see this hole here, and you want it to be equal on both sides. And once you're done there, you're gonna run the pistons back in. Before you put anything back together, you want to take your stop and run your stop in and make sure this moves. If that doesn't move, locks up, then you're 90 out. So you have to pop pistons out, rotate another 90, and start over again. Then just uh, make sure that you're pretty somewhat close there. Suck the pistons back in. Now this time you'll put your springs on the right hand side, on the same side as your rack. So when you take it apart, all your springs are on the left, same side as the rack. Now when you get ready to put the end cap back on, you want to make sure that your O-ring is seated down inside the end cap. That way it's not coming out in one spot or the other. You want to get your bolts hand started. And assemble it the same way as you took it apart. Now you want to go ahead and put air back on it and adjust your stops. You're off a little bit and just pair on it. And that's it.